Hello and welcome to a video about mole, the mole and molecular mass. So um, if you're doing it on a piece of paper, make sure you get your keywords and your nod of words down. Um, if you're doing it on the notebook, then just make sure you fill in the answers. Um, so keywords, mass, proton, neutron, mole and constant. What we're going to be learning today, so the learning objective, calculate the mole of a compound using its molecular mass okay so what i'd like you to do is have a go at the do now activities pause the screen write your answers in and then i'll come back in a minute and have a go at the answers okay so first question then draw and label an atom we've got to get really good at this and make sure that we can label the correct bits and comment on the correct things are. So you've got your nucleus, which is in the middle of your atom, and then you've got your shells that rotate around the atom. Your electrons are the negative ones. Your neutrons are neutral. And then your protons are positive, okay? We say that an atom is overall neutral because it's got the same number of electrons and protons. How does catalyst affect rate? Catalyst lowers activation energy. Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to take place. So if you're lowering that activation energy, more particles will possess, possess it. So more particles will have the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to take place. What causes water to go hard? A magnesium and calcium ions. Okay. What happens at a destructive plate boundary? Destructive plate boundary. Plates move towards each other. The more dense plate goes underneath and gets forced into the magma and melts, okay? Um, and this is how we form new land. Right, so um, like I just said, we're just gonna quickly go back through the atom. So like we've just been through in the starter activity, and you now should be able to label these without me giving much help. I suggest you pause the screen, try and label them again, just to get yourselves practicing. Okay, so we've got electrons, they are negative, and they are in the shells, okay? Electrons have got a mass of like 1 over 2,000, sometimes you say negligible. Uh, then you've got your neutrons, which are neutral, they've got a mass of 1, and they are in the nucleus. Then you've got your protons. They've got a positive charge. They've also got a mass of one, and they're also found in the nucleus. Okay, um, the overall charge of an atom equals zero because you've got the same number of protons and electrons. Okay, if you have um, more protons than electrons, so more protons than electrons, it becomes a positive ion, and then if you have less protons than electrons, it becomes a negative ion. Okay. That's to do with the amount of positive and negatives. So moving on then, something that we've done before, but we're just going to quickly recap it. The number of protons and neutrons is the mass number. The mass number is the massive, massive number. So the bigger of the two, and it tells you how many protons and neutrons you've got. Okay, the atomic number, which is the smaller number, tells you the number of protons. Okay, and like we've just said, protons equals electrons. So if you've got six protons, you're going to have six electrons. So what they might also ask you to do, what they might also ask you to do um, is to work out protons, electrons and neutrons. Okay, so you just use your atomic number to work out protons. It's going to be the same for electrons. And then for my neutrons, I do my mass number, take away my atomic number. So that would be seven. Okay, um, that's the kind of thing they might also ask you to do. 
Okay, so first little review, we've just been through the atom and how you'd use the mass and atomic number. Pause the screen and have a go at these questions. What charge does a neutron have? Neutrons are neutral. What's the overall charge of an atom? Nothing, because protons and electrons are the same. What does the mass number tell us? It tells us the number of protons plus neutrons. What does the atomic number tell us? The number of protons, which is equal to the number of electrons. So P, E, N, uh, 11, 11, because we're using the mass number, and then it would be 23, take away 11, so the number of neutrons is 12. P, E, N. So it's 3, 3, 7, take away 3, 4. Okay. Then P, E, N. 9, be careful because you're looking for the massive number. I put that one in there to confuse you. So 9 is the atomic number. 9, 9, 19, take away 9. So the number of neutrons is 10. Okay. So on now, um, we're just going to do a little bit of a recap on how we count compounds um, and then we'll have a go at calculating molecular mass. So I'm just going to write our compound, H2SO4, okay? So first thing when we count compounds, we look for the capital letter, okay? So we're looking for the capital letter. If it's a capital letter, it's an element on its own, okay? So it's an element on its own, so capital letters so with this one got capital h capital s capital o okay and then the number is for the element in front okay so that means we've got two h's one s okay so if there isn't a number it's going to be one it's never zero and then you've got four oxygens, okay? It's so always for the number in front, okay? Next thing to think about is just be... Oh, no, that's not going to work. Um, think about brackets, okay? If it's a bracket, times everything in the bracket, Okay? So imagine they've all got little ones by there. They're both capital letters. This is why I'm saying about capital letters. That's one element there because MG is one element. Then we've got oxygen, which would be times by two. And hydrogen, which would be times by two within the bracket. Okay. So next thing I want you to do is have a little review and work out what is in these elements, compounds. Again, pause the screen and I'll put the answers up in a minute. Okay, so we've got three carbons and four hydrogens. Remember to use your periodic table to work out um, the elements. We've got one nitrogen. And we've got hydrogen times by three. Okay, next one then, we've already done this one as an example. So we've got H times by 2, S times by 1, and O times by 4. Okay, again, looking at that one, that's a small letter. So that is the element, that's sodium. Be careful of ones that don't quite fit the trend. So sodium times by 2. Carbon's capital letter. There's one of it. Remember to put a little one if you're struggling. And then oxygen times by 3. Okay, last one, put this in as a challenge. First off, calcium, because it's a calcium. calcium, and there's two of it, okay? Then looking inside our bracket, they're both capital letters. Then we've got times by two. Imagine there's a little one there. So the S, which is sulfur, you'd have two of them. And then oxygen, we'd have eight of them. Okay, so be careful of the brackets. So we've all had to go now at counting the elements. Next thing we're going to do is work out the molecular mass. That's going to help us work out the overall mole. This is why I'm going through all these things slowly, just in case people haven't done them before or we've forgotten how to do them. Okay, but it's all going to end up with us calculating the mole. Okay, so I put the success criteria down the side. I'll work through this one. 
You might do another one and then you can have a go at doing a couple. So circle the different elements and their numbers. So we've got carbon and oxygen with two. Identify the elements, use your periodic table. Okay, so we've got carbon and we've got oxygen. How many carbons? One. How many oxygens? Two. The massive number then, okay, massive number, we have to use our periodic table. Okay, we're looking for the mass number, the massive number. Okay, you've all got a periodic table in front of you. So it's 12 and 16. Okay, times one by 12 is 12 times two by 16 is 32. Okay, you can use a calculator and then add up the total column. So it would be 44. So the MR of that compound is 44. Okay, if you're not sure, go back, watch it again. You can watch it 10 times to make sure you know how to do it. Okay, um, so I'll have a go at another one just to make sure that everyone's okay. So following the success criteria, circle the elements and their numbers. Okay, remember the number belongs to the element in front. Identify the elements, use your periodic table. So carbon and hydrogen. Lovely. Um, identify how many elements you have. Hint, the little number tells you how many. Okay, so we've got one carbon and four hydrogens. Find the massive number. Okay, again, use your periodic table. Massive number, the mass number. So carbons is 12, hydrogens is one. Hydrogen's a little bit of a weird one. Um, use a calculator to do how many times by mass. You should be able to do that one in your head. And then add up the total column. So the total MR of this one is 16. Okay. Again, if you don't get it, do it again and again and again until you do. Right. Lovely. I want you to have a go at these three now. Okay. Um, you should have this if you're using your notebook. If you're not, then you can draw out the tables, but eventually you might not need to use the table. Okay. But make sure you show your workings because they're often worth two marks. Okay, so elements, I've got carbon and I've got hydrogen. How many? I've got three and I've got eight. I've got 12 and I've got one. So that's eight and that is. So that's 36. I'm going to add them together. Remember, if you're not sure, use a calculator and the total for that is 44. Okay, next one then. I've got Na. Nope, I don't have Na. I've got sodium, sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. No bracket for this one. So I've got two sodiums, one sulfur, four oxygens. Mass number, the massive number from the periodic table, 1, 32, 16. Okay, if you're not sure, use a calculator just to make sure that you're getting it right. And then make sure you add them all together and you should have got 142. Last one then, iron, keep doing that. Iron and chlorine. Okay, you've got four ions, you've got six chlorines. Massive number of chlorine is 35.5. Mass number of iron is 56. So I'm gonna put these ones in my calculator. Four times 56 is 224. And then 6 times 35.5 is 213. Add them together and that should give you your answer of 437. Okay, some of them you can do in your heads, but just make sure you're checking on the calculator if you're unsure. Okay, so moving on to something a little bit harder and something that we then use our MR to calculate. Okay, um, quite a lot of success criteria up to number 7, we've just done in the previous activity, okay? So this is just adding an extra step, okay? So it says calculate the percentage composition of hydrogen in CH4, okay? So exactly the same step up till seven, okay? So I'm gonna do it quite quickly. So carbon, hydrogen, how many? One, four, mass numbers, 12 and one, 12, four. So the total MR, 
is 16, okay? And I'm at number seven, okay? So if you wanted to pause the screen and work through it, that's fine, but I'm at number seven, okay? So then it says, calculate the percentage composition of hydrogen in CH4, okay? So the total MR is 16. We're gonna do the total of hydrogen, which is four. So we're gonna do four over 16. Um, if you're using a calculator from school, use the fraction button, okay? So do four over 16 and then press the equals, okay? If you don't have a calculator that and using your phone, do four divided by 16 and press the equals button, okay? Make sure you're doing that because otherwise you're gonna end up with some funny answers, okay? So four divided by 16, just doing it on my calculator, that equals 0 0.25. OK, the last thing I need to do then is times it by 100, which is why I was telling you to press the equals button first. So that's 25 percent. So what we're saying is 25 percent of CH4 is hydrogen. OK, so just adding a little bit of step. I want you to have a go at these ones, please. OK, so we're working out the MR and then we're doing the little um, percentage equation okay press pause have a go okay so here are the answers okay so the total mr for number one was 68 and then when you did the percentage of carbon divided by 68 you should have got 84 percent okay then it says percentage of fluorine. So here's the total MR, make sure you're working it out. And then you're doing the percentage of fluorine. So you should have had two fluorines divided by the total. Okay, then hydrogen. So hydrogen, so that would have been 12 divided by 108. Press equals, then times by 100. And then the percentage of sulfur. Okay, be really careful because you've got two sulfurs. Remember within the bracket times and then divide it by that answer. So that would have been... 64 divided by 272 and that's and then when you times it by 100 or so it should have given you 24 percent okay so like i said that's just an extra step that you might be asked so i wanted to add it in right so we're going to move on now to the final bit which is calculating the mole okay calculating the mole so it says calculate the number of moles in 60 grams of co2 okay what we need to know okay um, or note down somewhere, is this a little equation triangle, okay? So mass over Mr. Mole, okay? And this is how I always remember it, is imagine a big mass standing on Mr. Mole, okay? Um, so that's a nice, easy equation triangle to, to remember, and that's how I always remember it. It's one of the few equations that you have to remember for chemistry, okay? So you might want to put that down somewhere you have to remember it, so it's really important. So circle the different elements and the numbers. So we're doing exactly like we were doing before. We're doing MR, okay? So I know I've got carbon and I've got oxygen. So I'm just writing out the MR table, okay? Maybe without, so I just do it like this. Element, how many mass total. So when I'm doing it quickly, I just do it like that, okay? So calculate the MR of a compound using the table method. So exactly what we've been doing before, how many, one, Two mass is 12 using a periodic table, 16, so that's 12. Um, add them together then, so you've got 44. So you've worked out the MR, which would be this bit by here. Okay, so we've worked out the MR. Write out the equation for calculating the moles, but I've written it in the table um, triangle form. So we want to work out the number of moles. So we need to cover moles. So we're going to do mass divided by MR. So that's the equation we're going to do. Mass divided by MR. The mass is 60. We've just worked out the MR to be 44. So I'm just inputting it into the equation. Again, if you're using, use the fraction button if you've got a nice calculator. If not, do 60 divided by 44 and press equals. Okay, but the fraction button, if you've got a nice calculator, will work better. So 60 divided by 44 equals 1.36 and that's like a little recurring so that's how many moles we've got okay um it says here hint make sure it's converted to grams but ours was converted to grams so it didn't matter okay so that's one i'm gonna have a go at another one with you and then you can have a go at a couple yourself okay so we do you have 32 grams of l2 Oh, okay, just be careful because the computer sometimes when it's converting it for a PowerPoint for me messes it up a little bit. 
So we know again, so element, how many mass total. So we're just doing the same thing again. I'm going to pop my little equation triangle in the top as well. Mass over Mr. Mole. Okay, so it's just a nice way to remember it. We've been using equation triangles in physics anyway. So element lithium and oxygen. So I've got one oxygen, two lithiums. That's 16. So mass number is 7, so that's 14 plus 16. I'm just going to do that in my head. 0 carry 1, so it's 30. Okay, so the MR of lithium oxide is... Uh, 30. So we've done the first two. Right out of the equation for calculating moles, like I said, we'll use the triangle. Again, it's asking us to work out moles because we've just worked out the mass and we've we've got the mass and we worked out the MR. So once again, I'm going to write mass over MR and I'm going to input my numbers. So I've got 32 as my mass. Make sure it's in grams, which it is. And then I've just worked out my MR to be 30. Again, use the fraction button if you've got it. If not, don't worry do the dividing. So 32 divided by 30, and this one equals 1.06 moles. Okay. So on the next page now, I would like you to pause and have a go at these questions. Okay. Um, and then I put some challenge ones where it's a little bit different. I will put the equation up in the corner just to help you. Okay. But that's about it. Pause it. Have a go. OK, so I've put the answers up for the first three. I've put their MRs by here. So the MR of this one would have been 30. So you knew the mass. You can work out the MR. So it had two moles. Next one then, 62 was its MR. You knew the mass. So you could work it out with 0 0.84 moles. Next one then, 120. You knew the that was the mass. I worked out the MR, and then that was 1.3. I would be expecting with yours to see quite a lot of workings. They'd be quite large questions, but I've just done that um, to kind of show you. Then with the challenge questions, we're just using the equation triangle in a little bit of a different way because we don't know which way they're going to ask you. So I have five moles. I um, What mass do I have? So I worked out the MR, it's 44. So five moles. What am I going to cover? I want to work out the mass, so I'm going to do MR times by moles. So I'm going to do 5 times by 44, put it in my calculator. Some of you have already done that in your head, but I just want to check. So that's 220 grams. Okay. Um, the next one, I have 6 moles of an unknown compound. I have 11 grams of it. What's its MR? So I know it's moles. I know it's mass. I want to work out its MR again. So I'm going to work out its MR. So I'm going to do mass divided by moles. So I'm going to do 11 divided by 6. 11 divided by 6. And that gives you 1.83 as an MR. Okay, so it's likely a very small compound. We're looking at something like H2 if we rounded it up. Okay, um, so that's it done. If you don't understand, give me an email. But most of you, I reckon, have had a good go at this. Okay, make sure you submit your work so I can check it and mark it.